regular panel. Uh, Holly, I do want to start with you, Hi, first of all, this morning, because Noel Pearson, he said some pretty strong stuff this morning. Mm. He says, Peter Dutton is an undertaker, preparing the grave to bury Uluru, guilty of Judas' betrayal of the country. That's very mm. strong stuff. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I think this is actually coming to the crux of the matter and the, and the problem that we're seeing in this voice debate, is that if you have questions, if you ask for any detail, if you ask how this is going to actually create a better environment for Indigenous Australians, not just be some sort of woke virtue signal, which then opens up government to being challenged in the High Court, that somehow or other you are a racist or you are a bigot uh, or, in Noel Pearson's word, an undertaker. I mean, this is the sort of language, I think, that is going to divide Australians when what we need to be doing is looking at something that can actually bring Australians together. And that was really where the position that was taken by the Liberal Party yesterday in our party room was that we do have questions about the detail that Mr Albanese is refusing to answer. He has Greg Craven, who is a big supporter of The Voice, say that, you know, mm. he cannot support the current wording, yet Mr Albanese completely blows people off and anyone who asks those questions as a racist, a bigot, and Linda Burney's out there as a wrecker dividing our country. Well, they're the ones dividing the country. This yeah. sort of language isn't helpful, and I think this is the sort of language that will push Australians away from it. So just to confirm, you're with Peter Dutton on this one? Absolutely, 100%. And, and, you, and you want to create, and, and I'll get to Matt in a second, but you want to create, this is what I was just talking to Karen about this, I'm a little confused, but you've got, you want to create a regional and local voice. You want to yeah. go bottom up instead of top down. Yeah. How's that going to make anything, anything easier with hundreds of different voices saying hundreds of different things? Well, I think things? this is the point. There are hundreds and hundreds of different Indigenous voices and not all uh, are going to be represented through this constitutional change that's being implemented. Yeah, so how's the, yours going to be any Well, the, the difference is, is we're looking at something that's legislated. So legislation is a lot easier to change than a constitution. And it also allows the Australian people to say, how is this going to work? How does it come together? So it's almost in some ways a try before you buy. You lay the groundwork before you start looking at constitutional change. Constitutional change is a very significant move and it's something that needs right. to be done well thought out we, and, and we can tell that because if, you know the bulk of referendums have failed because mm. Australians don't change this document lightly. Matt uh, over to you just first of all your your thoughts on on the Liberal Party's official position now. Well it's disappointing uh, Pete it's a clear signal that the Liberal Party wants to continue with this nasty divisive politics. Uh, well, I mean, but the, Noel, the people, and, and, and here we go again. Isn't Noel Pearson, doesn't that show that, 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 it's, that it's nasty and divisive on both sides? Look, the, the people of um, Indigenous leaders came together in 2017 in Uluru and they spoke with one voice and they all agreed to the Uluru Statement from the Heart and it contains these words. We call for the establishment of a First Nations voice enshrined in the Constitution. They made that request. The government... Wow. Uluru didn't call people for executive government. ..to work with us uh, on the establishment of a voice. And the government is delivering on that. The, the Turnbull government was handed the Uluru statement. The Morrison government procrastinated. The Albanese government is delivering on that. And we're trying okay. to work with the Australian people to establish what the uh, Aboriginal leaders came together in Uluru. There, there is so much confusion out there, Matt. Why, why not just support constitutional recognition? I mean, you, you will easily get that one done. Because First Nations leaders requested a constitutionally enshrined voice to Parliament. We're respecting their wishes. OK. Um, and that's what we're doing. It's as simple as that. We're respecting their wishes. This amendment does two things. It recognises... First Nations Australians uh, in the Constitution and it establishes a voice to Parliament as requested through the Uluru Statement from the Heart. OK, uh, but aren't you concerned about the legal unknowns? Well, there have been uh, several meetings between Anthony Albanese and Peter Dutton about this and Peter Dutton didn't ask for any amendments, he didn't ask for any further information. Um, Julia, Lisa and Peter Dutton have been invited to several meetings with the reference group that's been established to uh, put this proposal to the, the Australian people. They didn't ask for any amendments. They didn't ask for that further information. That is an out um, and, and out mistruth, and, Matt. Peter Dutton put 15 questions to Mr Albanese and most of, of them are still outstanding. The, 
we, we have acted on the You have to tell the uh, truth in this uh, debate. Uh, that, that, that is a fair point. I mean, you, you have to tell the truth, Matt, in this debate if we're going to have a serious debate in this country. What? Peter Dutton asked 15 questions of Mr Albanese, most of which were completely dismissed and ignored. You cannot automatically go to the Liberal Party's nasty if they ask a question. And this is where this debate is already divisive because it is accusing Australians who have genuine questions. Attorney General Mark Dreyfus, your own Attorney General, said that this would end up in High Court challenges and Mr Albanese dismissed him. So how do we have any faith that Mr Albanese would take any attention to Peter Dutton or the Liberals when he dismisses his own Solicitor General and his own Attorney General's advice? I mean, well, it's, a fair, it's a fair enough point asked. to put to you, Matt, yeah. Those questions that have been asked uh, have been answered. We know this. They have not. The, they, voice, they, they, the they voice, have been answered, the voice though, right? will, The voice will make representations to the Executive and to the Parliament about matters affecting First Nations Australians. They will be chosen by First Nations communities. It will be representative of First Nations communities. Uh, it will be gender balanced and it will include young Australians. It won't so what have a policy veto areas power won't be over, impacted? Um, it won't have a veto power over legislation and it won't have a service delivery model. So what All policy areas won't be affected? During, yeah. I mean, it... All of this was fleshed out during the consultations um, that Peter Dutton and Julian Lisa have been invited to. This has been explained um, through that reference group and, and a consensus was reached through that reference group okay. um, and an agreement was reached. Look, I mean, this we're trying to deliver on that. Yeah, but, trying but, to deliver. But, but, but they but, can't but, I mean, tell the, us which policy areas won't be impacted. There is a lot of confusion out there, but I just want to bring up something that Matt said, um, Holly, just to yeah. get your thoughts before we go, on, on the Uluru, Uluru Statement, which calls for the establishment of a First Nations voice enshrined in the Constitution. Mm. Why, why turn you back on that? Well, because this is not what's on the table at the moment. We're now looking at something that's going to be enshrined in the Constitution that we don't understand. We don't know which policy areas won't be impacted. Is this going to impact national security? Is this going to impact yeah. energy you know, uh, policy? What, what? No one can answer which policy areas won't be impacted because every policy area impacts all Australians. And so the fact that we're trying to divide this yeah. on race now is, is divisive. But the executive government clause is problematic. Mark Dreyfus has acknowledged that's problematic. Greg Craven, a big supporter of the voice and constitutional export, has now said this, mm. this wording is absolutely unworkable, will land in the High Court. I've personally gone through the High Court and had a very black letter reading of the Constitution uh, delivered on uh, a case with me. And if we get to a situation where we have activists, High Court judges, or even a very black letter High Court, we could land in a whole lot of trouble because they cannot answer the questions over what direct influence it will have on executive government. We asked a question in the Senate. We get a bill that's gone through the voice. We have significant amendments. Could we pass the amendments or do we need to go back to the voice? We don't know. Okay. No one can answer the question. Matt, Holly, we're out of time. Oh, Appreciate it. I've got to go. Sorry, Matt, we'll have to pick this up next week. This conversation is not going anywhere. Um,